Okay. So I, I'm talking about what's going on, and the state president looks across the table at me and he says, It's, and he names them. You know, if, if we're ones that are taught, oh my goodness, this is the spirit of discernment. No, this man knew that this guy was a predator and already cheated on his life once. And um, I said, Yes, him. What did they do? They call him, they hide him in the building. He had to speak, speak to the state president's office. My, my abuse was watching me, trying to make sure I didn't have anybody. Oh, I, like, I had to run across the church, literally, to go find the office before he found me. I was in shock when he called him into the office. And the two of them discussed like grown men. And I'm sitting there, this 18-year-old child with these two grown men. My abuse was 28 years older than me. And they decide between themselves that I should go back home. And that uh, we shouldn't tell the lie. And that my abuser has everything under control. It won't get any worse than this. Can you see where things go bad when you don't have a clear abuse policy? No. This happened to me in 1992. I think the abuse policy came out in 1990. So there was no hotline at the time. But we're still having the same problem with leaders that are told they speak for God and members that are told they speak for God. Who in the hell would send this girl back? I mean, that is crazy. And, and it upset me because if, if that state president had known what to do, had known this was a crime, in, in my state, Michigan, where this happened, Kalamazoo's Cal Mizzou state, I got the receipt, the state president was named Charles Freeman. Had he known the law, he should have taken me to the police station to report this as clerical abuse. But instead, I got ignorance and I got the worst advice, and I ended up being excommunicated for an affair, and all the shaming, all the blaming, the scarlet letter, the whole deal. And I knew that they were wrong, but I'd been trained to obey the church. So I went through excommunication. That three years excommunicated, married my abuser because I was abandoned to him and tried to put my life back together. Um, I, I mourned the loss to my life. If these, if these judges and people, if, if these men at the gate that Mormons are trained to go to for spiritual advice were only trained and had proper abuse policies, tragedies like mine and my daughters and my sons would not have them. I stayed in this church until last month. I officially resigned because I gave up. This is this church is my mom's life. She's like fourth generation Hawaiian convert. My dad converted. This the church was their whole life, almost to the point of it being an idol. And now I have nothing with my parents, nothing with most of my family over this church. And it wouldn't have happened if proper abuse policies were in place. I might still be uh, an ignorantly faithful, happy member. <laughs> and I really, I was one of those people that actually thought this was all true. I wasn't a utility Mormon here for the social thing. I believed it was true. But that's a whole other issue. So please, you guys, please listen to survivors. I sent them at their request a 40-page letter when they wanted to bring my abuser back in the church. 40 pages. Did they listen to me? No. They waited three months and then said, Okay, we gave you some time to think it over. Are you going to let him back in yet? The other wives, there were two other women, they were also asked. I don't know about the first wife, but the third wife, she was also told she was the only one that said no, and that was a lie. I said no, she said no. But it was more important to get the perpetrator back into the church. So, things need to change, church, or you're going to keep bleeding out the best blood that you have in this church. And I loved you guys. I mean, name you by name. Elder Holland, Elder Uckdorf, Elder Scott, Elder Packer. You were my heroes. You were, I mean, you were everything that, to me that I was trained to believe that you were. Will you please listen to victims and survivors and change this thing now? It's been going on 
for years, at least since the 90s. Look up the case reports of the Mormon Alliance. Look it up. Two women who blew this alarm in the 90s were excommunicated the same way Sam Young was. How many more victims do you need? Or are we, as I've concluded, send the book? That's why I gave up. And also, um, this trust issues. I don't believe that this is a, you know, look at the truth. And, and I can't stand up and be a member. So um, that's all I have to say. I'm going to grab my water and try to get my battery not to die on the phone. Um, does anybody else want to talk? We have two people sitting here. Um, you can introduce yourself when you come up to the microphone. I appreciate it. But, uh, yeah. And Kurt McConkie, I hope you're listening. <laughs> Well, it was definitely...